All right, question two. The first part of this two-part question comes from Emma underscore K-R-E-I-S. And she asks, what is the best way to study for the ACT math portion with no idea about trig or calc? Because she never took it. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, Emma, neither did I. <laughs> and I managed just fine um, because, honestly, both the SAT and ACT don't really get in the weeds with trigonometry or calculus. Um, it sticks to mostly algebra and geometry um, and stays away from the advanced level math, uh, which is good because a lot of us, like myself, are not great with numbers, not great with math. Um, so I was never in those advanced classes, and I actually never had to take them in college either. But it, basically the extent of my math education in college was statistics, required statistics courses. And outside of that, no knowledge. So <laughs> yeah, I was say my only required course in college was algebra, mm -hmm. and I tested out of it because it was one of those things. But right. yeah, it's not, as Abby just mentioned, it's more focused on algebra and geometry. Mm -hmm. I think with algebra, a lot of the time you can um, work through the, the problems, but with geometry, you really need to know all the theorems. So I think if you're going to spend the time, that's where you should spend it. Um, because, yeah, geometry and I do not get along. <laughs> uh, but I love it. Me and I geometry. I feel like if you're in a situation where you have to take, like, uh, answer questions for trig and calc, you've never taken the class, but you know they're going to be on the test, like maybe find a tutor, because there's a lot of tutors for these tests, and have them just kind of like go over the basics of it for you, just so you're not going into it knowing nothing. Um, also, I think these kind of tests allow you to bring a calculator in, mm -hmm. specifically a graphing calculator. Uh, and I think the SAT yeah. does, the ACT doesn't, right? I think the, I think the I ACT does. I wrote it does. down. No. SAT allows most graphic calculators. Yeah, you might have to check the results, <laughs> but I brought mine to the SAT. I'm pretty sure you can to the ACT. Yeah. And I put formulas into my calculator. Boom. So. I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> I mean, honestly, though, that. about the tutor aspect, you really, unless math is your biggest struggling point, I didn't personally have a tutor um, because, again, if these these are standardized tests and. Um, your teachers in high school are knowledgeable about the contents of the test and will be consistently preparing you for the content of the test. So a, a tutor is really more of a, it's, it's absolutely a useful tool, but your teachers are, or they should. Like, really worried about right. doing badly. Definitely. But I think in terms of the trig and calc, really <laughs> but for trig and calc, you don't need to hire a tutor specifically for trigonometry and calculus because you won't need to know much, if any. Um, on standardized tests like that because it's just it's not standard curriculum for all high school students yeah. luckily because I wouldn't have done very well benefit if you are taking those courses they will help you though whereas math kind of slowly builds upon itself and you, as you get further and further up so if you are in those courses I know Emma you're not um, and you're worried about that don't be worried if you are in them pat yourself on the back you get a, a nice <laughs> you smart up. yeah <laughs> exactly so that's, that's a, a good thing to have in your back pocket. Yeah. Um, second part of this question comes from Jasmine underscore Ari underscore G. Um, and they ask if there is any tips we have just in general for the math selection. I mean, honestly, it really depends on how strong you feel uh, your skill set is in the math department. And again, I was not a numbers-oriented gal. I'm still not. Uh, so math was very difficult for me, but I just used every resource that was available to me. So the test prep books, um, you know, online resources, collegeprest.com. Uh, <laughs> we can't teach you math. We can try, but. The calculator. Yeah, calculator. calculators are good. Say, don't forget that. Don't forget your calculator. Yeah, yeah that is a good tip. if you forget your calculator, you can't use your phone. Can't use your phone. No. So. I think another thing to keep in mind too is if you're nervous about the math section, and we did bring it up in the last topic, but being able to skip around and if you're not comfortable with the question, don't dwell on it. Yeah. Skip right past it. And also if you solve an equation and you feel like, um, 
mark it and take the time to go back yeah. and uh, double check your work there because if your gut's telling you that that feels weird, it's probably weird mm -hmm. and probably incorrect. So yeah. take the time to go back and scope it out. And uh, for any multiple choice math questions, just plug in the answers and see which one works. It's probably quicker than trying to do it without knowing the answers. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, true. At multiple choice, you can at least like cross off the ones you know aren't right, or the ones that don't. Maybe you, maybe you can if you don't know math that well. You just can't figure out which one's completely wrong. But that's I mean, a, if your answer doesn't one. match any of the multiple choice you answers, go. you know you got to start over. Not, right? <laughs> Back to square one. <laughs> yeah, I think math, the math section is definitely just a practice thing. Yeah. Um, like more, a little more than think than the English section because like obviously you need to study up on the grammar and um, what else is the English section? Vocab. Vocab. Yeah. But I think with math it's like a lot of practice. If you just get used to answering those questions and knowing the formulas, you should be fine. Yeah, I think everything that we said and going to Mackenzie's point is very smart about putting the formulas. You can actually write like anything you want in a calculator. <laughs> yeah. So if there are th certain things that you struggle at, make notes, or even if it's just how to do whatever the formula is, you can manually write it in and say, like step one, this is what happens. Step two, uh, I did that a lot in chemistry in high school because chemistry tends to have math problems as well. And I always forgot the conversions and things along that nature. So having all those as a dictionary in there because real life you're going to be able to look that up. Yeah. You're allowed to bring your graphing calculator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you don't have a graphing calculator, I think also when you go into the test, like memorize the formula as best you can and then the first thing you do when you open up right. the test book it is write down all the formulas you can remember. So you have it as a reference as you go. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formulae. That's what Abby said to her neighbors as she was taking the test. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's from you SpongeBob. Yeah. From SpongeBob. Did you not watch? Are you one of those kids that didn't watch? SpongeBob I watched as kid? SpongeBob. But SpongeBob I'm was made for adults, actually. A little bit older, so I haven't seen the new stuff. Is that an older one? The new stuff isn't even good. I'll show Thank you. you. I'll show you. Yeah. Really Just showing your age, bunch old of man. SpongeBob videos. Yes, and please look but SpongeBob was comments. absolutely made for adults. I'm pretty sure oh, yeah. it was like oh, originally yeah. pitched to Adult Swim, and Adult Swim was like, no. There are a lot of uh, <laughs> mm, jokes no. in SpongeBob that you wouldn't get if you were a kid, but like, yeah. when you're older, you're like, ah. Yeah, it all makes sense. Anyways. All right, ravioli. <laughs> <laughs>